Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley. We have a fun event tonight. We're doing something a little bit different here. We're going to try to see what is the best Irish whiskey under $50. So that's our price point. Uh, we ultimately are going to be going through 12. We'll be going through six of these tonight, blind. And I always like to say, I don't know that these first two events are very satisfying because we're going to go through all six. We will rate them. Um, and then we will have, uh, you know, the top three will move on. The bottom three are, will be eliminated from contention for the best Irish whiskey under $50. But we won't know anything more than that tonight. We, I won't tell you what's been eliminated. I won't tell you what's moving on. Uh, that remains unknown until the third and final event. So that's the plan. And we will be tasting these like we always do. The usual process, we'll, we'll go through, we'll nose them, we'll talk about that, we'll talk about taste, and then we'll go through a second time. And then I'll give you just a little bit of time to do some side-by-side -side comparisons on your own, and then we'll vote. And then we'll vote. What we're ultimately looking for from uh, the team here is a ranking from one to six, one being your favorite, six being your least favorite of the evening. And that's what we'll do. I cannot, I'm going to participate with you guys in terms of the drinking and uh, nosing, tasting notes, all that kind of stuff. But I don't get to vote because I do know what is what. So that uh, would make me uh, not a, an impartial judge. So I don't get to do that. So this is a fun one. This will culminate to on March 16th. The third and final event is on March 16th, right in time for St. Patrick's Day. So you guys will get to uh, be able to go out and buy a bottle on St. Patrick's Day of what we consider to be the best Irish whiskey under $50. Uh, I don't act like I'm an expert of Irish whiskey. I don't. Uh, know a whole lot about it, but we're doing this on the, I think the purest way possible, strictly on taste. And that's how we're looking for it to stand up. And I can be a judge of things on what I like by taste. So I feel like that, that much that we are all accomplished and able to do. So with that, let's grab a, and let's start out. And again, this will be participative of the group is small enough. We can have everyone involved. Let's talk about this. Classic, classic Irish whiskey, a mm -hmm. little bit of mint, a little bit of fre fresh cut grass, very subtle, little sweetness. A little sweetness. Rob, you're going to be our expert based on the hat alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't tried this. I tried to sit in front of the Irish whiskey shell. Sections. So okay. Yes. It's a little dark down here, so I don't want to yeah. blind you with these lights. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're clearly going to be our, our expert there. <laughs> it does not smell like bourbon. You would not, uh, yeah. No, it's, it's grassy not. and herbal. I agree with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the cut grass kind of like, uh, like on a sunny day and how the, the grass kind of smells. It's a little bit yeah. you know, dry, but still grassy. Maybe a little bit of a, you know, like grapes, like a wine type of nose, even a little bit, maybe even. Interesting. All right, let's taste it and see what see what we got here. First one of the night. Cheers, of course. Cheers. 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 Wow, I do like that. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. It does finish kind of like a, a dry wine. It does have a mm -hmm. dry finish. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's sweet up front, almost. I don't know, maybe kind of a little bit applesauce in taste, maybe. I mean, it's maybe kind of like a, a, a cider, but not apple cider. So it mm -hmm. doesn't have an apple taste. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. That's pretty good. Pretty good. We're just on the first one, Bill. Uh, so we're just on A right now. So that's what we're trying. We got B poured. If you want to go ahead and pour that one too and have it sitting there. But I got them all poured. You got them all. Or you can pour them all uh, if you want. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Paul, what are your thoughts on this one as you, as you taste it? Yeah, I like it. I mean, you can definitely tell it's got that, that drying taste that I get from a lot of Irish whiskeys. Um, mm -hmm. But it's definitely sweet. Uh, has like a, a graininess to it. It almost reminds me right up front, like I'm drinking like a, a very, very young like whiskey. Yeah. But then it kind of rounds out. It's, it's pretty good. 
it, it sticks with you on the finish for a while, really kind of in the center of the palate, though. It's not like it's mm-hmm. like warmed all the way down or anything like that, but kind of does stick with you mid palate on my tongue, on the roof of my mouth. It's kind of continues to stay warm. So, Sean, how about you, man? What are your thoughts on this um, one? Classic Irish whiskey. I'm pretty sure I probably have this one over on the shelf. Okay. Uh, I can't identify which one it is, but. It's He's familiar, familiar though, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Rob? Yeah. Some, some of the same things. I think it's got um, like a little light citrus zest um you know with uh maybe like some sort of like spiced apple like a cinnamon apple there's maybe something like that in it but it's very very uh very subtle Mm -hmm. uh yeah certainly drinkable probably seems like an 80 proofer for sure Mm -hmm. yep mr bill what are your thoughts i like it yeah there you go okay so so for real um (laughs) are all of these uh no it's 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 good it's fine uh, are all these in the same neighborhood on proof? Uh, I don't even know. I, I, I didn't. I, I honestly okay. didn't uh, didn't factor that in. Uh, I went for the under fifty dollars, and that's what I was shopping and trying to get the best value I could. Cool. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of regardless of, of proof, and then I didn't really. I mean, I've got the models, and so I could look it up. But no, it's no, fine. Um, to me, this tastes like some kind of a a whiskey cocktail. It doesn't taste. It, like a whiskey that I'm familiar with because I've, I've, I'm not familiar with Irish whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, I, I don't come into this acting like well, I'm kind of like I'm, I'm not, but I just, yeah, come at, come at it of let's do it just on taste and we'll see what we figure out we like here. So, all right, Melanie, how about you? Uh, just grassy herbal and uh, like a, a dry wine finish. Okay. Neil, anything else to contribute on that one? I, I think everybody else has hit pretty much anything that I could say. I'm not I'm not that familiar with with Irish whiskey, so I was really looking forward to yeah, me too. To learn a little bit about it. So I'll say I this: it's a really cool way. I'll say this: I, I like Irish whiskey. I, I would say the general rule with Irish whiskey is I tend to like it. Um, I, I find bourbon to be more complex and I of course like it better, but I like Irish whiskey. Whereas the general rule with scotch is I don't like it. Now there are exceptions to both of those. There's some Irish whiskeys that I've tasted. I didn't like, and there's some scotches that I've tasted that I do like, but the general rule between the two is I kind of like Irish whiskey and I kind of don't like scotch, but that's, that's where I stand on this. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're going to be going with B, but we'll pour C for those of you pouring along and C is really light in color c is wow. as we pour that we can see that is like a straw colored interesting but we're not talking about that one right now we're talking about b b is very different than a yeah b's got different nose to it kind of maybe a little marshmallows in there interesting Almost get a kind of a fruity nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a dried fruit. Dried fruit. Like dried apricot or Mm -hmm. something like that. Apricot. Apricot. Okay. Sean, you look like you're getting a good nose there. Anything stand out? The apricot is. uh kind of obvious okay all right let's uh let's try this one let's give it a taste see what we got here really light yeah very thin on the mouth feel for sure so what are are there rules for irish whiskey other than being made in irish ireland (laughs) <laughs> we're going to turn that over to rob and ask him to <laughs> fill us in rob what are the rules i'll answer you this way N- not nearly as many uh okay. there's different styles like there are like there are there are uh, you know call it like a blend and like a single malt that's like mm-hmm. very common in irish in irish whiskey but you have to remember they're all i shouldn't say all 99 percent of them are using former bourbon barrels so they're leaning on <clears throat> they're leaning on the blend, uh, the blender far more than the distiller, and they're leaning on the influence that they're getting from the bourbon uh, or the barrel that they're using. 
Um, not gonna, that's why you're seeing such light, light pores for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. Uh, on the taste. Again, not offensive, kind of sugary, uh, kind of doughy, maybe sugar cookie ish. Um, not much. There's no finish that I can detect on this one. I mean, um, that's, not, it's, it's almost like a fruit juice. Yeah. 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 Like a fermented fruit juice. Yeah. It's, it's not like a hard cider type fruit juice. I, I feel like they can put it in one of those cartons with a straw that you poke through the top. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Here's one of those. And then here's, here's one's Irish whiskey. One's, uh, you know, a, a to go box. And I don't know. I... <laughs> okay. So the executive bourbon steward information says Irish whiskey is more latitude than bourbon, scotch or Tennessee whiskey. Uh, produced and aged in Ireland, made from cereal grains, fermented by the action of yeast. Distilled to a maximum of 189.6 proof, oh, put into high. wooden casks not exceeding 185 gallons for at least three years and free of added substances other than coloring. Coloring. Well, they can put color in it and it's this damn can light. Put color in it. Well, that doesn't it's mean they have honey. to. Doesn't mean they have to, or they even <laughs> are. So, yeah, but they, they can. Uh, Irish whiskey drinkers do not care about color like bourbon drinkers do. It means nothing. It's not mm -hmm. a dick. It's not an indicator of quality at all, like it is in bourbon. Gotcha. Gotcha. Paul, what are your thoughts as you taste this one? Number two here. Yeah, like I said, this was a easy, easy drinker. Very soft, no finish at all. Um, it's like a, it's got a decent mouthfeel. It's kind of buttery, like a little, you know. And I get the, the like the unbaked dough. Um, mm -hmm. But I do pick up like a little bit of citrus and honey, maybe on the back okay. end, right before it fades away to nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's not offensive by any means. It uh, I it doesn't feel like it could hold up in a cocktail at all. Though. That thing would get lost. Yeah, yep. I, I think ice would take it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Sean, the humidity, anything? The Go humidity ahead. in the air would take it away. It might. It might. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, anything else to add on the on the taste on this one? Not really. Okay. I think you guys summed it up well. All right. Rob, and how I about you? Did, oh. I did have a question. Sure. Are all these true Irish whiskey? Because I know there's a couple that say irish whiskey on it but they're made in minneapolis no these are not not uh, american made at all so these are these are all true irish whiskeys by every definition of it so hmm. they, they can put irish whiskey on a, something made in minneapolis are they cheating uh, sometimes they get things get through i guess but i wouldn't think they could do that yeah, I mean, based on the, the guidelines, it says it has to be made in Ireland. Yeah. I, so I wouldn't think they could label now, and it can be sourced. So uh, I know that there are companies that source Irish whiskey, and then they, they can put it on the label. And then there's American distilleries that do that. Um, so that, that certainly can happen, but, yeah, but it has to be the Irish whiskey in there. Yeah. You have to, yeah. If it's distilled in Minneapolis, it can't be yeah. Irish whiskey, at least, again, unless they've gotten something through that at some point will be stopped i would guess mr bill what are your thoughts here on on b versus uh is this one get your i like it rating or where do you stand you like for me uh yeah all the way around color uh nose and and taste it does have a buttery finish but it doesn't last long so yeah yeah it, again it's not bad i just don't feel like um if, if it's got to be lower on the proof too it can't this one can't have much to it to prove. Uh, 12 so maybe 12. It's, 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 it's actually 12 proof so uh, <laughs> uh this one you could drink all night on the porch and not fall off the porch actually so that's that's what they say on the label so rob how about you what are your thoughts on on b i think i think everyone nailed it yeah not not a whole lot going on here just very drinkable very light yeah not something you'd ever put in anything. This is something you could just drink yeah. like mother's milk. <laughs> yeah. Very, very soft cider. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, let's pour D. D, but we are going to talk about C. C. All right. Pour 
I'm not catching much on the nose on this one. Anybody? This is like a, a lighter version of A. It's kind of back to the grassy herbal uh -huh. nose. Yeah. Very faint. It's, it's not it as is. pronounced. It is very faint. 18 proof. 18 proof. Okay. <laughs> Bill, you can run the uh, speckometer on all these and tell us what we got. Actually, I think the nose is better on C than on A. Okay. Yeah, because it picks up another, there's another note there. It's kind of a, kind of a fruity note. I first wanted to say orange, but then it's maybe more apple. Yes, yeah, more apple, definitely. Yeah. Who's jamming? I was uh, telling you, a little dance music going. The Robinsons are at a club, apparently. They're not at their house tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's taste this one. Let's see what we got here. There's a linger. Yeah, there's a linger. A little peppery. A little peppery. Yeah, this this <laughs> tastes like a, a higher proof. It's mm -hmm. got a real good mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, real buttery. Oh, I do like this one. Yeah, yeah I this, like it. This is the most complex of any of them so far. I agree. So there far. is there is some some flavors to this one. Maybe even the first taste of a little oak in there too, which is mm -hmm. uh, different than the other ones. Nothing going on there in that realm at all. This one, I'm getting a little little taste, a little hint of oak. A little oak on the background. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Rob? What are your thoughts on this one? Let's see. Yeah, this, I, I agree. This is the leader in the clubhouse. I think. Mm -hmm. for sure. It's just has a lot of lot of nuanced flavors, but um, uh, and then it, it it's got the longest afterlife for sure. Yeah, nice uh, nice finish on it. And seems to be nice and balanced. Yeah, and this one's this, pretty. This good. one could be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, this does get into that because it's it's definitely still an easy drinker, but it feels proofed mm -hmm. up. I mean, it's it, yes, it's it's good. Not only any other and uh, other thoughts. For the official record on this one um i don't think so okay okay sean what are you thinking about c here i'm thinking which barrel it's finished in because mm -hmm. um, once again i'm pretty sure i have this in the cabinet and That'd be really um, good if you could pick out by taste what uh, what barrel it's been finished in. Now that would be somebody who's a pro. It's like when you watch one of the companies ones. has several different uh, okay That's barrel cool. finishes for their primary product. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you watch those wine videos with those sommeliers and they tell you what it's from and what time of the year and all this kind of crazy stuff. It's hard to believe they can actually do that seems fake maybe it is maybe we'll start making videos like that with whiskey we'll feed you guys the lines it'll be fun we'll get a lot of we'll get a lot of views on it paul what are your thoughts here as you taste c uh this is a good one um mm -hmm. it's peppery it's got a great great mouthfeel the finish is great i get like um like it's got kind of like a tannic like leathery oaky finish that mm -hmm. kind of lingers um it's, yeah, this is the best one so far, I think, for me. Oh, yeah. I would buy that one. Yeah, this one feels a little bit more familiar, too. It feels feels like uh, a little bit closer to what we're used to drinking. Mr. Bill, what are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. All the way around. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, I like it. He likes it? Okay. It's the best so far. It's the best so far. Yeah. Rob, anything uh, else you want to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Thanks. I even wrote right. in my notes. I like it. I like it. Okay. That's official then. Let's uh let's grab D, but we're gonna pour E. E will be then waiting for us. It'll be ready when we are. E. Okay. And don't forget we're trying D, so 
Hmm. This one's kind of lighter on the nose too, but there are a, a couple of different notes in there. Oh. Again, kind of fruity and herbal. Um, circus peanut. I had circus I mean, peanut. Circus, circus yep. peanut. Yeah. 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 You get like an apple -y, apple -y thing on it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So very different than uh, our bourbon. You know, we're just used to those caramels and vanillas and brown sugars and all those things. You have to get a different flavor wheel for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely need a different wheel. We'll have to work on that too, but put that on the list. All right. Let's try this one. a little bit of pepper too yeah but it's got a little candy sweet to it yeah definitely candy sweet um that pepper does kind of linger a little bit in in there on your tongue it yeah, sticks around kind of a nice finish yeah yeah so that's kind of nice but again pretty light i don't it doesn't taste quite maybe as high proof as uh c c right Better than B. Yeah. Yeah, B's the lightest. That, yeah. And this one kind of grows on you a little bit, too. It's like you want some more. All right, Rob. What are your thoughts here as you get into this one? So this one smells like, um, <clears throat> there's a distillery called Cooley. It's a... Uh, I'm pretty sure they're owned by Beam and Tory. They're like a they're they're a big distillery that that produces several brands. To me, this one smells like a Cooley whiskey. Cooley, okay. All right. I can't tip you off because though I have the official uh, list of what's what, I don't have it here with me, and I don't remember. So uh, don't read anything into my body language. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> The ultimate poker face right now. This is exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sean, how about you, man? What are your thoughts on this one? First drink, didn't like it. But mm -hmm. like you said, it grows on you. The mm -hmm. second drink, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Second drink, you start to like it, and then you start kind of craving a little bit. It's it's good. It's good. Mr. Bill, what do you think about this one? D. Well, where this one uh, is probably uh, from Cooley, uh, B was from Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's not working on his act. So, I'll, yeah. I'm wondering <laughs> where you're going with that. He's, he works for tips in Key West. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's that's how he earns his uh, money for his trip. So, he'll Someone be down there. Someone needs to cue the drum roll sound effect. Yeah, that's yeah, true. exactly. <laughs> Paul, what do you think of this one? Uh <clears throat> I like this one. Um, it's not complex at all. I get mm -hmm. like I get like one note on the nose, like a faint apple juice. I mm -hmm. right up front, it's like powdered sugar sweetness, and yeah. then it turns into a peppery finish. I mean, it's literally like three notes, not complex at all. But yeah. but I but I do like how it transitions from fruit to sweet to peppery finish. It's yeah, kind of a kind of interesting one. Yeah, def definitely different. Melanie, what about you? What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody said it's, um, I don't like it as well as C, but it's not bad. It's drinkable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last but not least, Mr. Neal. Yeah, uh, everything everybody else said, I think um, the, the peppery sweet, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, I don't know, kind of fun. I mean, it's just not, it's, yeah, it's not yeah. real, not real heavy, just kind of a fun drinker. Okay. All right. Set that one aside. We'll pour our last one, uh, which is F, if we've done this correctly. Pour that one. Hmm. Let's set it aside as we grab E. All right.
This one smells like beer to me. Like beer or, okay. ale, or an ale. Hmm. I was thinking more like peanuts on this one. Beer with peanuts. Beer and peanuts. That's a good combo, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. Beer nuts. <laughs> beer yeah, it's nuts. Like when you when you walk into a restaurant that that serves peanuts, you know, it has a big barrel at the door. Yeah. Grab a peanut shells on the in. floor. Yeah. 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 That's what it smells like. Oh yeah, that used to be a big thing back in the day. The old peanuts shells on the floor. How could we even lived in a world like that? Uh, peanut. Yeah, yeah. With peanut, peanut allergies and, and epipens. Between peanut allergies and uh, slipping on the peanut shells, it just seems like there's there's nothing good that could come out of a restaurant like that. It seems yeah, seems like poorly thought out. But what a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's taste this one. And see what we got here. Here we go. E. It has a little bit of a scotchy taste to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, it does. You know, are, are you talking about with P? Yeah, it uh, it has a little bit. It's kind of it's kind of sweet, but in yeah. kind of the middle of the the taste as it transitions. Again, I I think there's a good transition here. It goes from to me, it goes from sweet to to light band aids <laughs> to, to pepper. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's so, but and the band aids being yeah. kind of that scotch band aids that I get on some of these scotches I don't like, but it goes away real fast. Yeah, it does. It does. It doesn't. It's not super band aid. It's it's just in there. You get it. It, it passes through on the yeah. way, and uh, yeah, but it's sweet, light band light band aids, and then pepper. <laughs> this is probably the most complex. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, I think it, that could, those descriptions you guys are making to scotch could indicate it's a, but maybe a single malt. Mm -hmm. so, it's, uh, so that would be made from like entirely like a malted barley. And then you get that a lot with, uh, with scotches. Um, and it could be a double distilled, which tends to give it that scotchy feel opposed to triple distilled, which is what you get most often in, in uh, this range of Irish whiskey. Okay. See, he's earning the hat right now. That's right. Yeah. I wasn't going to wear this hat and let you guys down. <laughs> we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah. Sean, what, what are your, yeah, it, is, it does. Sean, what are your thoughts on this one? So I'm wondering if it was in a beer cask. Okay. So you're picking up the beer too, like Melanie, you're getting, you're getting that. Yes. So that, that could be. It definitely could on be. the nose. Mm-hmm. That might that might be it, Neil. What about you, man? I'm the same way, I, but it, I think this is the most complex one that we've had so far because it's got so many different pick up so many different flavors. It's more unusual. It's more yes. yeah, more unusual. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it it has a. I like the finish on it. It has the elements of being totally different than bourbon, um, you know, and like I said, there's kind of that little bit of a little hint of, of what tastes like scotch in the middle. But again, not to the level that it makes it offensive. It's very good. I think I think it's I think it's good. Melanie, how about you? Um, yeah, I, I like it. Um, yeah, definitely drinkable. Okay. Paul? Um, yeah, more of the same notes as everybody's saying. Um, I picked, you know, that that PD hint of band-aids and bike tires in the middle there just uh, kind of sways me. This is mm -hmm. far down on far down on my list so far. Favorites. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not to the point of burnt rubber bands. True. True. Mm -hmm. Burnt rubber bands in the dumpster. We had that on that four roses that one time. Yeah. Yeah, we had no, that, that four roses. Oh, man. That was the worst thing we ever drank. That was as oh, bad as it. Well, at least it, Jim agreed. That was <laughs> That yeah, was the guy bad. that made it didn't even like it. Yeah, yeah, Jim Rutledge did not like that. No, <laughs> not a fan. Yeah, they were doing what they could, I guess, back in the day. And that's when the accountants were all controlling what everything was done. So, all right, Mr. Bill, we'll let you weigh in on this one. The last one to have any say. What are your thoughts on E? Uh, it, it's okay. Okay, good. 
gosh, I'm glad they're not here tonight. Like they were on that one where you said it's okay. <laughs> this isn't one that I would buy, but if I was at somebody's house and, and they poured me a glass and I tasted it, I'd say, you got anything else? And if they said no, then I would drink it. Okay. okay. <laughs> would you, would you accept a second class? Say that's all, I, this is all I got. Uh, you want a second pour? Would you do a second pour? Probably. Okay, sure. Well, there you go. Much, much, much better than uh, like blackberry flavored whiskey. Okay. Okay. Now it's very ominous, the music. Not as, not as light and airy as it before. <laughs> it's a Disney movie of some. Oh. It's the new one. The new one. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to F. Let's talk about F here. What do we think that is on the nose? That's the most unique of the noses, I it think. It is. <clears throat> That's totally different. It's got some bakery smell in there. Mm -hmm. Also banana. Yeah. Yeah. Dried banana. Dried banana. Dried banana. It's Jack, it's Jack Daniels Irish whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, our, it's our newest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not like fresh banana, but dried banana. Yeah. For the sure. dried like bananas. The, 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 dry, the dried the banana. Chips. Yeah, the, the chips. The, the dried banana chips, yeah. I can see that. It's it's definitely totally different than all of these. I'm so getting a little Band-Aid on this one. I didn't on the last one, but I get okay. a little bit out on, the, on this one. A little Band-Aid on the nose, okay. Yeah. Where do you right. taste it? It tastes like that, too. All right, let's see. Last one. <laughs> Cheers. Bill's working ahead, I think. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that takes a couple things. It's got the Band-Aid and the iodine uh, in the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got them both in there. Oh. Yeah, that's not... That's that's kind of medicine-y, uh, hospital-y like. Yeah. A lot of, uh, lot yeah, of so hospital smells you get. It's like a, a disinfectant. Yeah. Oh. it may be okay let's go to our expert here though see uh, we're not gonna you know uh, there's different flavor profiles and people like again a lot of people like the the scotch ones i'm talking about i don't like people love them so uh, again there's totally different palettes out there so let's go to rob our, our in-house expert here irish whiskey see what he thinks of those uh, you guys kind of sound like the newbies who you pour bourbon for the first time <laughs> I, you know, tastes like jet fuel that's what i'm hearing no i I, I, it, it definitely is. It's acquired like anything else is, but I, I don't, I don't uh, necessarily get those notes. I get, um, I get a little bit of that. I'll call it like a brininess okay. or then I will, like a band aid. I think that's a little less offensive sounding at least, but I get more, I get like dark fruits, like a, uh, like a raisin or something along those lines more than I get uh, some of the descriptors I heard, but um, I think it's maybe in the middle of the pack somewhere. Middle of the pack. Okay. A little bit higher proof, it seems, too. It's and there's there's a little sweetness in there, almost a cake frosting sweetness that's kind of mixed up with all those other other things going on there. Paul, what what are your thoughts as you taste this one? Yeah, going back to it, the, you do pick up the sweetness a lot more than the first um, first mm -hmm. sip was kind of different. Um, but yeah, it's it's medicinal, but not in not in a bad way. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, the finish lingers. It's a good finish. Um, great mouthfeel. Yeah, this one's not bad. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Mr. Bill? It's always a curious one. Uh, Make, I don't know. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's not one that I'm going to go looking for to buy. Okay, okay. I think if we would put your review, it has to be all of us. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's okay. That would be the official review. That's the official review. I think it's like Rob said that this one's really an acquired taste. And this may be a more authentic Irish whiskey. I'm just yeah. I'm experienced with them. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't want to blast Irish whiskey. I think it's a fine product and it's different than what we normally drink. Yeah. And right. uh, yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with different. That's okay. 
Sean, I don't know where you, you sound like you do a little bit of Irish whiskey too. You, you kind of, you kind of like to explore the world of whiskey. So what, what do you thought, think about this one? It's by far the strongest, both nose and taste, you mm -hmm. know, the, the previous ones have been very subtle and this is definitely not subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't particularly like this one, but. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, what we're going to do next, we'll put this aside. We'll start all the way back at the top. Uh, we're going to go through these a second time, not to the level that we did last time. This is more of kind of a group think uh, type of thing. Just throw it out there if you like. Uh, not going to call on anybody individually. We're doing this at a high level to go through a second time. So we're jumping all the way back to A. Let's uh, grab A. And talk about it. I mean... It seems to have opened up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after, so I after don't going. Any, any, go ahead. I was just going to say after. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go. I don't get anything different than the first time. It's just more pronounced. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Paul? You, you were going to say. Yeah, no. After... Well, I think, no. <laughs> <laughs> Moving from E to F and then back to this one, I mean, it's completely different you could probably trick me that this is like a, a young whiskey off the nose mm -hmm. i mean it's mm -hmm. completely different than eden that mm -hmm. yeah no it's a big contrast herbal i I, th I like it what's going on on the nose on here uh, it's good let's 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 taste it let's go back and taste it a second time see where we're at i mean pretty light uh, you know what we again i don't think it's really evolved very much sweet so you still get the sweet on there a little spicy at the end sticks with you a little bit but decent decent not offensive that's what i was going to say it's yeah. the least offensive of all of them yeah yeah it's not offensive but uh not a superstar either i don't think it's just it's a strong working one it's just right in the middle of the pack just kind of a good one that, uh, you know, probably, probably decent. All right. Let's set that one aside. As we go to B, B should be an interesting one. B was very soft, if I remember that correctly, right? That's as we went through the first time. I'm getting that circus peanut on the nose on this one. It's almost like a wine now. A opened up quite a bit when we went back, but this one doesn't seem, it's still very subtle. Yeah. All right, let's try it. Yeah, that's. Yeah, where's the, where's the little pointy straw? Yeah, I, I'm telling you. I, I might not recognize that's alcohol, to be honest with you. It's just, Again, it's, it's sweet. It's okay. It just yeah. tastes like a fruity, sugared up drink to me. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Anybody got anything they want to add to the record on this one? Putting out, I'm putting on the record that I think this is Powers. I don't want an answer yet, but I think this okay. is Powers. Could be Powers. Okay. Interesting. All right, we're gonna move on to C. Let's see what we got with C here. That's pretty good on the nose. Yeah, that's opened up nicely. There's a lot of different, a uh, the, the, the little bit of layer of uh, notes on the nose. So that's different. Let's taste it, see what we got. Yeah, 
I think it's about the same as the first time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The finish improved for me. It went, it was for me, in my notes, I was leaning like more tannic and leather, but mm -hmm. now it's kind of like more oaky to me. So definitely oaky. improved. Yeah. Yeah. And it sticks with you on the palate for quite a while. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it stays around. So it keeps hanging out with you there. So that's kind of nice. Anything else on this one? This one's next or skip one. Do. You'll do not skip any. Let's She's the one that usually works ahead. She does, huh? That's what Bill does. We, we caught him a couple times tonight. Overachiever. Yeah, he's an overachiever. Okay, that's good. Let's set the let's set C aside. Moving on to D. Let's see what we have happening here with D. This is um, it's uh, very light, but I'm getting a little licorice. A little licorice on the nose. Hmm. I'm getting like um, something really light, like rose petals almost. I mean, it's there's also a sharpness to it that. This one feels like it's evolved a little bit then. Let's let's yeah. see if it what it's done on the taste. Oh well, wow. that's good. Yeah, I mean still has a peppery sweet finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of sweet almost, dare I say bubblegummy on the up front on the sweetness. Uh -huh. And then, and then the peppery at the back. So, I think first time around we said circus peanut, so that could have transformed mm -hmm. over just to kind of sweetness. Yeah. When I was a kid, there was these little purple disc that were kind of chewy, but they weren't chewing gum, and they had an anise taste to them. And that's kind of what I'm getting on this, but really light. Hmm. Purple discs. I don't. I can't say I'm familiar with those. I, 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 I don't know if it even had a name, but mm -hmm. maybe it was just cow, cow turds or something. I don't know. <laughs> Might have been. Might have been. It's cow turds. You remember where you got it, Bill? Because we grew it was up a too far. Field as a dairy. A field. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I think we have solved that. Okay. No, it was like a Woolworth or something like that. You know, back way back in the day. Yeah. Because we grew up not too far apart. Okay. There you go. Remember when they used to have, you get that penny candy stuff, and it'll be, you know, all these like Swedish fish and all the, the stuff's open. You just scoop it into a bag and that. Was it one of those type of things, Bill? Something like out of that? It, it's like a general store kind of thing. I, I okay. don't, yeah, it wasn't something that was wrapped up. It was yeah, more like. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. General store with the right. store. Bottle caps, maybe. Bottle caps? Bottle caps? No. No, this yeah. was before the bottle caps. Like a hard, just like a hard candy. No. So this it's was kind of chewy. Oh, not, okay. not like a chewing gum, but chewy, kind of waxy chewy, but not maybe it was just old. <laughs> maybe. The general store. This uh, this happened in 1879. <laughs> 1883. Get it right. <laughs> Bill's, Bill is yes, he's 141 years old, folks. So hmm. he's held together pretty well. It's the booze that does it. So that's what keeps it together. Home. Are they called Rito mints, Bill? I just googled. Did they look like? Uh... Oh, oh, he had it for a second. There it is. Yeah, sort of like that. Oh, it looks like go. dog feed. <laughs> it does look like a dog. That feed. might have been what it was. You, well, you can you can buy it on old time oldtimecandy.com. Candy you ate as a kid. Huh. Hmm. That's crazy. Old time candy, huh? Interesting. People still make that stuff just for internet now. The internet opens it up to all these things, I guess. So that's cool. Oh, you you can go into um uh like Cracker Barrel and they've got all the old candy and you mm -hmm. buy it and you're like, oh yeah, I remember this back in the day. And then you're like, 
oh yeah, now I remember why they stopped selling it. <laughs> not very good sometimes, huh? Sometimes not. All right, let's put D aside. Let's grab E. Let's grab E and see what we got. Very clean smelling on the nose. Fresh. Yeah, it doesn't have as discernible uh, particular nose as it did the first time around. I went ahead and tasted it. It still tastes the same, though. Mm -hmm. okay. See, I told you. you. On... She worked ahead, yeah. yeah. She cheated. What I'm getting on the nose is like a, a barrel-aged rum. Okay. Hmm. Let's let's taste it and see where we're at. Yeah. One of them, somebody said, tasted uh, like it came from a beer keg. Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. I did. Was it this one? A little bit. Yeah. A beer yeah. on the nose and kind of a scotchy taste. It tastes beery to, to me. Uh, definitely. More so now this time than yeah. even before. I'm going to go with IPA. Yeah, an IPA. A little hoppy. A little hoppy. It almost feels like, a, and Sean can relate to this, we, we, again, not even when you're tasting, but when you're in production area of the Anheuser-Busch tour, the smell permeates so deep that uh, you kind of get some of that that taste uh, in your mouth. You, you can almost taste it. Kind of like that a little bit. I think this is a I think somebody, Budweiser uh, Barrel, actually. This I think somebody uh, made a song about this that uh, makes me hoppy. Don't worry, be happy. I don't know. Uh, he uh, he is working on uh, his his routine for <laughs> Key West. Yeah, he's gonna be. That's one of our events, actually. It's one of our events, uh, Bill. It's uh, Mr. Bill Knight. So yeah, he tells jokes is and Mr. stories. Mr. Bill Open Mike Knight. Or, it's okay. a it's a he's a one man show. So yeah. And the funny thing is, is that you guys would probably get me drunk, put a microphone in my hand, and it would be off. And here yeah. I can you hear me? Can Still hear talking. Me? Yeah, we can Still hear you. <laughs> Still talk, yeah. We'll be like, Yeah, we're fine, keep going, Bill. Yeah, everybody's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, do we think Bill's gonna get in trouble in Key West? Because when he over drinks, he gets in trouble. Do we think at any point Bill will get? In oh, trouble? yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Oh, yeah, yeah. are we taking wagers? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Nope. We had an iguana last year by the pool, and McNew ran over to the side and threw up in a bush. And I'm not kidding you, the next day. Uh, like the next morning we're out at breakfast and the sun starts coming out and then this iguana emerges out of this bush and he's got vomit on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're like, we knew you, you hit that iguana last night. <laughs> it was so great. So great. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Iguanas. The iguana woke up and said, damn, he's yeah. like McNew puke. Yeah. It's like, what the hell happened here? Oh, now you got McNew thrown up in the things. Alan Bishop urinating in the in the bushes. It's a whole thing going on down there. So, yeah, it's part of the fun of being uh, in Key West and drinking a lot, I guess. So, there you go. All right, F F. Hmm. I have to make sure I, I wear my gray shirt. Oh yes, of uh -huh. course. He doesn't like to stand out. He feels like if he doesn't wear red, he doesn't stand out as much. So he can do, he can get away with things <laughs> like that matters. Um, this is, as I remember it, this one hasn't really changed for me on the nose. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. Let's taste it. <clears throat> Take it's your medicine. It's pleasant, but it's so odd. Yeah, that's definitely different. Definitely, definitely unique. Um, definitely a different one. But we'll see. We'll see how that plays to the judges because unless anybody has anything they'd like to add on F, and I'll give you guys just a little bit of time to make your list. Again, you're making a list from one being your favorite of the evening all the way down to six being your least favorite. A, B, C, D, E, F. Have those ranked. One to six. I like to give you guys some quiet time where I don't talk, allowing you Ready? guys to just work, just work freely. 
I'm not ready yet, Elmo. I feel like people are still working on their list. I saw you working as we went, but uh, I don't want to put pressure on people. Undo pressure. We're here having fun. All right. Bill stacking. How did the circuit breaker thing go, Bill? It went to okay. You got that taken care of? Yeah. Well, obviously. Yeah, I had to turn every circuit breaker off to get. Is that what? So uh, all that's why you lost power at one point to the uh, event. You right. were fine, and also you just dropped. So I guess but Donna fine. was uh, uh, in the sewing room, and we she's got a space heater in there, and she had it plugged into the wrong place, and it popped a circuit breaker. Yeah, and I couldn't figure out which one it was, so I said, "Screw it! I'll just turn them all off." Just turn them all off, and there you go. There you go. I, th I found it. Well, sure. When you turn them all off, you're going to find it, of course. At that point, you can't miss. In electronics, that's called shotgunning. Shotgunning. Okay. There you go. You, you, re, you replace everything until you find the one, that, the part that was bad. That's a shotgun approach. Okay. Yep. All right. Is everyone ready? Everyone good. All right. I'm going to transition over to the spreadsheet, meaning that I cannot see you, but I can hear you. So, uh, if you need to say anything, uh, don't just wave or put it in the chat. You'll have to uh, reach out to me, yell out to me. Uh, Bill, we're going to start with you. You're up first. What do you what What's your order here? Okay, uh, Charlie, Delta, Alpha, Echo, Bravo, Foxtrot. Okay. All right, Melanie Robinson, you're next. All right, uh, C. D, E, A, F, B. Okay. Neil. C, D, A, E, F, B. Okay. Paul. D, C, B A F E B A F E. Okay. All right, Rob. We go C E B F A D. Hmm. Sean. I've got C. A, E, B, F. Sorry. Yeah, I missed one there. No, five is D, and the last one's F. D. Okay, gotcha. I only got five fingers, man. Uh, I hear two. you. I hear. I hear. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if it's a clean cut situation here. So we've got, yes, okay. All right. And let me see here. Okay. All right. messing this up okay it was close it was close okay but it is clear cut all right okay again kind of anticlimactic here because you don't know anything about these um, but uh, of course we'll share this in the the last event that we're doing um, uh, in March 16th, we'll let you know what, how all of them fared and we'll go back through and remind you which one was which and all that kind of stuff. But at the bottom of the list was F. So F finished with just 11 points tonight, uh, very bottom of our list. Uh, B was next second to last, the very soft one, uh, that came in with 16 points. Then it was very close here between who gets to move on and who doesn't It ended up being 21 to 20. So that close, we're literally within one point. 
Uh, the rest is all pretty clear cut, but uh, this one is a, a tough race. And of course, the difference between uh, the two there is moving on and not moving on. So kind of a big deal. E ends up with 20 points, does not move on. A has 21. It does move on. And then you got D with 24. And then the clear cut winner was C with 35 points. So there it is. There it is. C, D, A will be moving on. C, D, A. So you'll see them in the finals. They'll have different uh, letters, of course, that we'll share at the end of the event. Uh, what is what on uh, event number three. But for right now, we know them as C, D, and A as you're drinking those and finishing them out or whatever you do or save them. Uh, that's how things ended up. So there you go. There you go. One in the books, two more to go. We do one of these a month, three months in a row. So next time we'll do this will be in February and then culminating in March. So very cool thing. And uh, very good. With that, we'll say goodbye here. Bye. And then Bye. Uh, turn up the recorder. We'll get this to our folks that couldn't make it tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll see them on the next event and we'll, we'll get through the next three to move on. To, to the May final. the road rise to meet you. May the sun be at your back. Is that an Irish accent there? The devil knows you're gone. I don't know. <laughs> Is that the, was that your Irish accent there? That was my Irish accent. <laughs> I thought it sounded like Transylvania or something. Yeah, yeah. She oh, needs to work on that. that. Work on that. We'll have that. Good. Melanie will have that better for next time. So tune in next time and we'll see how Melanie does. Thanks, guys. <laughs> see ya. I'll stick around. Bye. <laughs>